thanks everybody for coming to this. And thanks to my staff for, uh, for helping out with this as well. Um, thanks to Service for organizing such a great event. They did a great job. This was easy for me and Rich, Rich and I. Um, so I'm Corey Med. I own two guys in a pizza place, and I have since uh, its beginning in 2002. It was uh, me and my high school buddy, Scott. Uh, that's why it's called Two Guys in a Pizza Place. We got drunk and thought that was a good name. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. We were young, um, you know, kind of silly and uh, kind of thought, what's the worst that can happen? We, uh, we came across a, uh, a location that basically was kind of went under, kind of bankrupt, and the landlord had some, uh, some equipment. And um, one thing led to another, one conversation led to another, and, uh, and we started a new company called Two Guys in a Pizza Place in that location. Um, Scott left the business a year later. He went on to, uh, to uh, film school in Vancouver and other ventures. And, um, and you know, that was weird. I mean, I, how do I buy out a partner when I have no money and we don't know what it's worth and what's going to happen? And heck, I don't know if I even wanted to buy him out. So um, that was, that's a funny story. Well, I'll talk to you guys individually over a beer. But, uh, but, uh, but then it was down to one guy. And um, that's when, I mean, I had to trust other people with the business, with a key. I had to let people answer the phone, let people cook a pizza, let people, you know, close the place down and lock up. And uh, that's when I realized, oh, this is this is this is easy. I can do this. Um, and um, it's kind of been like that for I guess almost I guess 13 and a half years now, where, you know, as we got busier and I hire more people and more management, and delegate more work out to them, and they can delegate more work out to people. That I've been able to take a step back and work more on the business. And ultimately, I think it's led to bigger, better things than, than having me do dishes. You know, I wish that 13 years ago I had an in-depth business plan, done my research, had more money, had more time, had more partners, whatever. I, I wish I had all that, but I guess everything happens for a reason. And, um, and we didn't have time for that because we were paying rent and it was just time to open the doors. So uh, we basically borrowed 5,000 bucks each off our grandmas. Um, you know, bought a sign, bought this, bought some food, paid cash on the first food delivery, and we opened up, and I, uh, we literally had zero dollars in the bank on the first day we opened. Sold some pizzas, bought some bacon, sold some pizzas, bought some cheese, you know, uh, um, it, it went like that for a while, for sure. Some of the highlights of uh, my pizza career, I guess. Um, in 2008, we were named Canada's Best Pizza, and that kind of came out of left field, and um, that was good for, I mean, it was good for local publicity and, and local word of mouth, and, um, and it bumped sales uh, tremendously. 2009, 2010, you know, that's when we started thinking, like, we might have to get out of this location, we might have to move on. And, um, and in 2012, I had thoughts of buying this building, and it was in the works, and we got named Canada's Best Pizza again. Uh, it was a live competition in Toronto, and our pizza was unanimously decided to be the best again. So uh, two-time champion and um, feel honored. And, uh, and that year we went to Vegas and we competed with uh, the Italian club, which some of you may have had tonight. And that pizza, that was like the third time I made it in Vegas, but it got uh, fifth in the world at the International Pizza Challenge. And, um, and honestly, the top four people were, you know, the who's who of the pizza industry and speakers and guys that organized the event. So I was, uh, I thought we were uh, doing pretty good for, uh, guy from Canada, I guess. Our marketing mix now is, I think, pretty impressive. Um, you know, we still do traditional stuff. We still do magazine ads, uh, you know, hotel guides, um, college handbooks and university handbooks. We're on the bus benches around the corner. We're on the bri uh, 98.1 The Bridge right now and radio stations. Um, we even do phone books. Does anybody here actually ever use a phone book? I would love a hands on this. If, Anybody ever uses a phone book? All right, got a couple, sweet. so there you go. Um, has anybody made a call from their phone directly from the Yellow Pages app or Google or whatever? Yeah, okay, perfect. So we try to keep, a, a, you know, keep on top of all that. You may ask why would I be in the phone book? It's maybe a different industry in the pizza world than it is in your industry, but I have a 1-800 number in the Better Book, and it's the only place I put that 1-800 number, and I can track that phone number and I can actually listen to the conversation as well. And I, it's not like I do a lot, but I could if I had to, and it's a way to make sure my staff are doing their job and whatever else. And believe it or not, we get you know, 30, 40 phone calls a week from that 1-800 number. Social media and online, uh, you know, we have 3,000 followers on Facebook, 2,000 on Twitter. Uh, we're pretty high on the review sites, and we keep an eye on that, and our Google optimization as well, uh, and other search engines, we're pretty high on that as well. Um, we have a Google Street View, 
uh, for this business. So you can walk right in here on Google and check out the restaurant. And that, you know, Google thinks, well, thanks for doing that. We'll bump you up a little more. And, uh, you know, my, my uh, menu designer and website designer has some tricks up his sleeve as well to hopefully bump us up. And, and then Google catches on to those tricks and then we come up with new tricks and uh, whatever. So other than the uh, paid advertising at the top, we're usually near the top. Um, the Facebook, Twitter people, you know, they're people that they found us through traditional methods and now they're here and they see on our coaster to follow us and they follow us and they want to know about beer features and specials and they're sort of our hardcores, I, I feel. And, uh, and uh, so you can handle them a little differently, I think. I got lucky and, and You Got Eat Here called me and uh, I'll talk about that in a bit, but You Got Eat Here is a Food Network show and we were featured on that and it aired uh, March of this year. And, so now we are pretty busy in here and now people know that they have to eat here and uh, we've had you know uh, an article in Lethbridge Living in the Herald a few times, pictures here and there and then obviously on the Food Network so that stuff is priceless really as far as advertising is concerned. Um, it leads to great word of mouth and, uh, and I mean especially the You Gotta Eat Here thing. We now have people that like they'll be doing a You Gotta Eat Here trip through Alberta and they'll email me or phone me or just tell the server like we're here from Grand Prairie or Medicine Hat and we went to a few of these places and uh, we saw your episode last night rerun and we had to drive from Medicine Hat to eat your pizza. So that's remarkable. I can't ask for anything better than that. So um, I don't know how long that'll last. I think it'll rerun for a few years, but, uh, but it, it's been really good this year for sure. It's always been my belief to give back to the community. And so I do a lot of charity and a lot in the community. Whether it is just somebody walks in and catches me on a good day and I give them a prize for a golf tournament or a charity event or a staff function. Um, you know, we've taken our food truck to golf tournaments and given out a free slice of pizza on hole 14. And, uh, and um, that's one way to, you know, feed people, do good for the charity. And maybe I golf that day too, I guess, or whatever. Um, we do a uh, meal share, which is uh, from Calgary originally, I believe. And, uh, it's great if somebody comes in the dining room and gets certain items, a dollar goes to charity. And uh, we do a lot of that. Um, they're big on Twitter and Facebook. We do a lot of gift card deals with uh, you know, some of the bigger realtors in town and uh, the welcome wagon. So you have a, you know, a, an older lady come into your house and tell them that this is Canada's best pizza, here's a free $10 gift card. I mean, it's what better advertising than that. Um, we feed fans at the games, so we don't only do like business card size ads in, in the guide. We, we feed fans, we bring pizza to the Bulls games, the Pronghorns, the Kodiaks. So we get our product in their mouths and hopefully get them hooked if they've never had it before. So I think that's better than any paid advertising. Another lesson I learned over the 13 years is, uh, is surrounding myself with good people because um, all, all I really know is how to kind of run a pizza place. So I have to surround myself with good people. And the first lesson was probably my staff. Um, you know, hiring the right people. In the early years, it was like guys that bartended with me at the keg would come in the next day and, and hang out. Um, like friends of friends, girlfriends of friends, boyfriends of girls that worked for me. So it was, it was almost like a family. It was a close-knit uh, bunch of friends that would hang out after work and whatever. And maybe that's not every franchise's sort of policy and not every business's policy, but it was, it was fun and it was cool and people were having fun at work and we were doing a good job. So, um, you know, lately, I, I, if I put an ad, we went from, sorry, we went from 30 employees at the old location to about 65 here. A lot of them are part-time, but you know, adding servers, more delivery drivers, adding a lot of part-timers, dishwashers, I have to hire a lot of people and um, turnover can be high some times of the year. Um, I, I, I call it the three C's. I did learn it from another speaker, but I mean the three C's of hiring, character, cohesiveness, and capability. And honestly, it's usually in that order. I mean, if they're good people, you can train them how to make pizza. Um, cohesiveness, if I think they're gonna get along with others, that's very important, I think, here. And, uh, and then uh, capability, doesn't hurt if they've cut a pepper before or whatever, used a meat slicer. But that's usually the order it goes in nowadays. You know, food and beverage suppliers, surrounding myself with, with uh, you know, getting a good relationship with them, I guess. You know, um, at first it was like, I got to pay up front. I got to prove to them what I can do. Um, I got to prove to them that it's worth them delivering from Calgary to me. I got to pay them on the spot or whatever, or pay them in advance even. Now, you know, we're a little busier. We have some more buying power. 
Uh, we, we get GFS four times a week and, um, and now I'm, you know, I'm on a rebate program with them and I have a great relationship with them. And, and then other professionals, so surrounding yourself with other professionals, I have a great lawyer, you know, great financial advisors, um, a great relationship with my financial institution, um, you know, and that includes James at Service Here. We use Service for this project and we use Rich for this project and that has developed into a relationship and uh, friendship and I mean, James was at the gym, you know, laid back conversation here and there to now here I am three, four years later now and, and I mean, I can email him with a question and he'll get back to me and he'll spend some of his time on some silly business idea I have and he'll tell me what, what the bank requires and what is needed and what's, you know, and what he thinks of it in all honesty. So it's nice to have that. For a while there I was very involved with uh, the Young Professionals Association of Lethbridge, you know, meeting people in the city, having lunch with people with no agenda, just having lunch and just learning and just seeing what's, uh, you know, picking their brain. And I love those kind of meetings, you know, breakfast clubs and, uh, you know, I was on the College Advisory Board Committee for a while. So um, another uh, key learning point over the years is constantly learning my craft and sort of always educating myself. So I'll, I'll go through this quickly um, and then we can get to question and answer. But uh, again, groups in the community, you can learn from them. Um, trade shows and conventions. We were going to the International Pizza Expo every year and we would go to seminars and we would talk to pizza guys that are way ahead of me in the game and we would learn about the you know, competitions and what it does for them and how they open a second store and how they open 40 stores this year and stuff like that. Just blows my mind some of these guys and girls. Um, CFIB and uh, Restaurant Canada, a couple organizations that you know you get an email from once a week and I sometimes actually read those emails and, and read what they're talking about and I can also ask, phone them and ask questions as well. I can ask them anything about labor laws, you know, um, ideas, who to talk to about phones and this and that. So um, that's great. Lately, I've been getting into podcasts. I did a podcast for a guy from Smart Marketing, P SmartPizzaMarketing.com. I did one, and then I went and listened to his 40 that he did before me, and they're great. I mean, it's unreal to hear these guys talk. They're all in the same position as me, some younger, some older. One guy's opening 200 pizza places in the next two years. Like, it's insane so um, focus groups and even survey monkey uh, you know through social media surveying my customers and people I know and and just seeing what people expect out of this pizza place and what they want and what they like and learning that way uh, straight up just asking customers I'll ask you guys tonight what you know how's your pizza asking advice asking ideas stuff like that asking my staff my staff are in the trenches they you know they do it more than me and they hear customers more than me and they you know they're they're making pizzas for themselves and maybe I find something that I like and uh, and ask them you know you know procedures and they 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 know this kitchen better than I do now so I have to ask them for their advice as well and in closing I mean the last 13 years has completely flown by from a young kid you know that had no idea what he was doing to doing this right now to people that you know speaking to you guys is uh, is pretty humbling for sure it's been a blast uh, it's still fun to come to work every day and I, I love it um, as much as maybe I feel behind or unorganized, I feel like we've built something here and I'm very proud of it. And uh, I think that's all I got, guys. Thanks for coming.